Today, we are joined by the founder of uscreen.tv, where he's helping you monetize your videos online. PJ Tai, welcome to the show. All right, Mark, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, PJ, it's absolutely my pleasure. Really excited to chat with you about something that I think about a lot, video communication. We're in the middle of COVID-19. It seems like this is the time to learn it, but I wanna go back in time. I wanna go back a few years. What was your initial inspiration to start uscreen.tv? Yeah, absolutely. Initially, I wanted to just find a better way to get video streaming to um, potential customers, especially starting out with the health and wellness space. And I targeted in 2014, um, anyone that was selling DVDs and fitness was just really easy to target. So that was the initial way to get, hey, is there a simple way to monetize videos? Because there was YouTube and a lot of free content going yeah. around, but was there an easy way to make money with videos? And there was a few solutions for on demand and setting a price and little widgets on the website but there was really no good way to give that Netflix experience. And I knew that the Netflix concept of the way the catalog was set up is agnostic and can work for many different types of companies. And that's what we give you at Uscreen. Any type of content can set up their own Netflix. Yeah, I love that a lot. And you know, a lot of the after hours entrepreneurs, we're creators, right? We're creating videos, we're creating podcasts. And it's one of the most common questions that I see is how can we monetize? How can we monetize this? Right? So I'm going to ask you, PJ, from, you know, you're working with tens, I think you've got over 10,000 users on uscreen.tv. What's a common denominator? What's something that you're seeing that's really working for creators on uscreen? Yeah, absolutely. I would say there's a few. One is a lot of our creators that do really well do subscriptions. So they're ultimately building a subscription or a membership site per se. So they do that really well. They put uh, effort into the quality of content, right? So the value they're offering, whether it's a workout, whether it's a live event. So they're offering value for that dollar amount that they're charging for whatever currency that may be. Um, so yes, of course it's, you know, some content is very well produced with good sound and audio and it looks very professional, but the majority of content offers that value and it's not the most beautiful thing you've seen, um, from our customers. So the value in what you offer as well as the price and who your audience is. So that's most common in those aspects of you know, how much you're charging, how you're charging, the value you're offering, and who's your audience. So I, I guess, and I would agree with this statement, so I'm just going to make it and assume that you'd agree with me. Probably the best place to start is just on your phone, right? I think so many people get caught up in, when I get this piece of equipment, then I can get started, right? Yeah. But I, I, in my opinion, it's better just to start doing something, see how you can provide value, because, I mean, I don't know about you, but... To me, it seems like when you're creating something, you have to be able to pivot and seg segue because what you thought that your customers and clients might respond to, they might end up liking something different. Has that been your experience, PJ? Yeah, that's a really good point. Absolutely. With even building software or using our platform to sell a piece of content, you want to launch that MVP. So you want to test that concept and then expand on it, right? So you're absolutely right. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? You want to ship your product. You want to ship your content. You want to get that to your audience and see what they think. Most of the times, everyone, if you can reach your audience, right, you have some kind of email list or a social following or an Instagram following, a YouTube, it's very easy to reach that following in with those verticals. They're so happy to hear from you and see that you're doing something above that free content level and you're offering them value. So I absolutely agree. I think for myself, I've started to create some YouTube content and I want to launch my channel this year, next month. I have really struggled, Mark, with sitting there and saying, all right, I got to get this thing to look good, the sound to look good. Initially, getting started with video from my experience is really difficult. But once you get everything fine tuned, it's easy. And guess what? You got to ship it. You got to hear feedback. And then that progression path gets you to be better and better because you obviously can look at, you go to YouTube, you search something, how to sell videos online. The first few videos that come look really good because that's the cream of the crop. And those are the ones at right. the top that are, you know, YouTube and Google are showing. But in that case, you look at everything else. Everyone has had a progression path and getting better and better at what they do. So it's okay, and you're absolutely right in starting out simple, getting it shipped, hearing feedback, and then improving. 
I'm I'm 100 with you there because it can get so easy to get caught up in this perfection paralysis where once everything's perfect, then I'll start. I had a friend of mine who really wanted to start a YouTube channel, but could just couldn't do it until he got a kayak. Once he got his kayak, then he could start his YouTube his outdoor YouTube channel. I said, my friend, you do not need a kayak to start a YouTube channel. Your first videos are going to be your worst. Just get started. So. He, he actually never got started. He still doesn't have that kayak. So rooting, rooting for you, buddy, rooting for you to get there. Um, I, for me, though, it's all about this focus of getting better and enjoying the journey. Uh, because the first time you open up Premiere Pro or you open up uscreen.tv, you're probably gonna be like, all these buttons, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know about the tagging and the distribution, all that. Right. Um, but for me, at least, it's about just making each piece of content a slight bit better, adding one extra feature and then yeah. over over time it it compounds um hey mark here thank you so much for watching make sure to smash that like button for the youtube algorithm let youtube know you're enjoying this video let me know you're enjoying this video all right let's get back into this episode i'm curious with uscreen.tv is there any sort of feature that you didn't see coming that you found to be highly impactful yeah hundreds mark there's a lot <laughs> a lot to be honest in building software is really complicated and you have to know who you're offering that software for. Who's my target audience? And I tell our customers that too, right? Who's the target audience? Are you providing um, yoga? Is it meditation? Whatever that may be. So yeah, absolutely. There's features now that we never thought would come. For example, um, we have marketing tools built inside of the platform, which help you do your email automation. Abandoned cart sequences are built in. It's a click of a button. Right. And we have this feature. It's called reduced churn. If you've ever been on daily burn or Netflix and you're inside, you're logged in and you want to cancel, it says, Hey, don't leave. I'll give you 15% off and you can take advantage of that. That's all built in. And if they don't, it asks them a few questions, sends them email win max to try to get them back and give them that coupon. So yeah, there's a lot of features that we didn't think of. Um, a really cool one is, you know, with the screen, you can get your own app, iOS and Android. And then if you lock the phone, the audio plays in the background, which is really useful if you're riding your bike or doing yeah. a workout. So a lot of that stuff comes from feedback. If I were to sit here and wait all the time to know, okay, what should I build before I launch? We still wouldn't have launched. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's one of the things that I found with YouTube specifically is create, 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 then go back in, look at the analytics, where are we seeing a, a big drop off in viewership. This is something that's really easy to, to find. If you have the same opening for all of your videos and you see, okay, I'm getting a big drop off in my YouTube videos at this exact moment. Is there, maybe there's a word that I'm using that's not resonating, right? Maybe there's a sound effect I can add in. Maybe there's some sort of clip, you know, so right. just finding those, those types of things. And I, I really love how you've got everything done because as an after hours entrepreneur, as after hours entrepreneurs, it's really tough you know, because we have to navigate all the marketing, all the video, all the editing, all the outsourcing. So it sounds like you've kind of married all that together with Uscreen, which is which is pretty impressive. Was that your initial vision or has it evolved over time? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things I knew initially coming from my previous company, a web hosting company is all in one works. Yeah, you want to be all in one like a Shopify, for example, yeah. right? Or a Wix or a Squarespace. When you go to Wix or Squarespace and you sign up an account, they don't say, hey, you need to go purchase your domain name somewhere else. You got to host the website somewhere else. And then you use this builder and upload the files. It's none of that stuff. Everything's built in the shopping cart and all that stuff. So I knew it needed to be all in one. What specific features were inside of all in one was a different story. Mm -hmm. So, for example, starting out, I didn't sell you screen in different packages saying you get 10 gigabytes of space, 100 terabytes of streaming. Who knows what that means, <laughs> right? Like still to this day, 20 years after the internet, even in web hosting, that was confusing for people. I knew that. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to do limits of streaming, it's 100,000 streaming minutes. We still don't do it like that, but that's easier than a gigabyte, right? So we just say, hey, you're allowed 7,500 minutes of storage. That's mm -hmm. 125, yeah. you know, 150 hours. So you know right away, hey, I can upload 100 hours of content. Yeah. And then we don't limit streaming and stuff like that. So I made it simple. So all in one, make it digestible. So in the average user, for example, I name fitness because it's about 30, 40% of our audience, but it's easy to digest and target that audience. 
Um, who knows how much this much streaming is, this much storage? They just want to do business. Right. So you got to make it simple. Right. Well, and especially now where a lot of the people in the health and wellness industry are probably really struggling. I know down here in South Florida, a lot of gyms are closed or have been closed or just starting to open up. People are trying to find different places to work out and exercise. And I know uh, there's a lot of fitness professionals and gym owners that are really struggling. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of curious, PJ, on the business side of uh, you screen, have you seen an uptick in the amount of your clients and customer base as a result of COVID? Yeah, that's a really good question, Mark. And honestly, we feel very honored and very humble about being able to help so many different brick and mortar businesses, yeah. both health and wellness, gyms, clubs, studios, as well as theaters, symphonies, operas. Opera of Australia works with us. Maryland Symphony works with us. Um, we have really cool concert venues. And then we work with SoulCycle. That's a really good example. Everyone knows SoulCycle. You go to the studio, pay 40 bucks for that really awesome class. I like spinning myself and bike riding, but now SoulCycle fully streams their live um, events on Uscreen, right? We also have Choose out west. Choose is a really big, low, um, I think they call it low cost, high value, low dollar, high value type gym. Uh, and then Vita in DC, which I'm a member of as well, works with us. So we work with probably over a thousand fitness companies, probably more than half is brick and mortar, um, all the way from your SoulCycle to your individual influencers and studios that we've been able to launch a hybrid experience for so the gyms will open and i'm going to go back to the gym too but yep. i would love to be able to do a spinning class right here yep. with my big monitor as well as a workout from home and i think everyone's adopted that so yes i'll go to the gym five times a month but the other two times i'll do a workout from home so the hybrid approach is what we're helping our customers launch and there's so many ways to do that with on demand and live yeah, and I got to be honest with you. Even I, I'm, I'm, I agree. We're going to get back to business. Brick and mortar stuff is going to open up. It is opening up, but I think that it's it's a very dangerous position to be in to focus only on that. You have to be at top of mind at all times because someone's going to take your lunch. I mean, for me, that's a big motivation in starting this podcast, this video podcast experience, because people need to understand that we're going through this major shift in the way that business is run. I mean, I don't know if commercial real estate will ever, will ever fully recover from, from this, yeah, you know, the, the amount of zoom meetings, the amount of video content that people are consuming at all times, different, like you can get a 15 second TikTok, or you can listen to a three hour Spotify interview on Joe Rogan. Right. So there's, there's all these different things that we're kind of playing with. Um, and I, so I want to kind of shift this question back to you, PJ, when you're seeing people create videos and, and they're saying, hey, I need to go digital, I need to create a digital experience, are there any mistakes that you're seeing that people should avoid making up front? Yeah, that's absolutely a good question. Well, one of the first things we touched on is focusing too much on the quality of yeah. the, uh, the picture itself, right? Yes, you gotta have your picture right and you gotta have your um, video correct as well as your sound. Nobody likes a static sound, but overall focus on the quality. But a really good uh, answer to your question is content overload. Too much content in your catalog and what you're offering just overloads people. That's why Netflix keeps you in a circle. If you notice, my content is different than my girlfriend's content, right? Mm. Because it's relevant AI. It, we have the same thing, relevant videos based on what you watch, but they keep you in that circle because there's probably I don't know the exact number, but I guarantee you there's a lot of content on Netflix, probably <laughs> 5,000 titles, maybe more, but you only see maybe a few hundred. Yeah. You go through that catalog. The reason for that is people get overloaded. They don't know what to watch. There's too many options. Mm -hmm. So content overload is real. So organizing it well and starting small, you can use our analytics to see what people are watching. The same thing you would do on YouTube. And that's a really good starting point. Yeah. And I also want to interject that YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all these places have areas where you can create playlists. You know, the After Hours Entrepreneur, I focus on a lot of different topics, you know, it's podcasting, it's franchising, it's uh, video, it's it's all these different stories. And so being able to categorize them in different playlists is very, is really, really helpful, I think, for uh, fans of the show. Because if, if you don't care about podcasting, if all you care about is video, okay, here's a playlist of some top video producers. Um, so that's something that I think you, you can certainly take advantage. Doing the small things right, it, it adds up. 
yeah, we you can do exactly that on Uscreen. We call them collections. Yeah, it's ultimately a playlist. It's exactly what you're talking about. You create a playlist of content for the October workout, whatever that may be. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah. Just being able to categorize the things, super helpful. Um, of course, we're talking to PJ Ty here from uscreen.tv. And uh, my name is Mark with the After Hours Entrepreneur. So, PJ, I kind of want to segue a little bit into your involvement into podcasting, right? So, you're doing all this video, but now you host a podcast. What was your motivation to get started on that audio experience? Yeah, absolutely. With the podcast, what I wanted to do was introduce everyone to the fact that it's easy to do and it's easy to monetize and show them different use cases, right? From all the way from your workout, health, wellness, to your entertainment, to your e-learning, teaching math, teaching English, whatever that may be. I wanted to put that specific different types of use cases in front of people and letting them know what's happening as well as educating them on the industry best practices and all those different things. It's called the Video Entrepreneur Podcast, and it basically is a nice roundup of a lot of different educational content and use cases of people using the platform and what we're seeing in the industry. Yeah, well, and I, quite frankly, I think that there's going to be some major changes in the way that we're educated over the coming years and decades. I mean, I think everyone intrinsically understands this and knows this is that school is meant to teach you how to pass tests, right? Whereas... That's not always practical. I was recently speaking at a local high school on financial matters. Not one kid in two classes, about 60 kids, not one kid even knew what a credit rating was. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, you, you have no chance. You, you, you're starting off like with a broken leg in a race. It's just it's just not going to work. Uh, how important do you think that video is towards the future of education and, and what you're doing at Uscreen? Yeah, absolutely. I think video is extremely important because it's going to be more and more relevant as we move forward just because of the fact that the internet is getting so good and streaming so well uh, due to 5G. Already yeah. the networks are strong, but 5G really accelerates like and minimizes latency and the quality of the stream that you'll be able to get instantly without having to wait, buffering and all that good stuff. So. Um, it's going to really change things. And I think uh, the fact that distribution is easy and it'll be in the palm of your hands and streaming instantly is definitely going to be um, more and more popular as we go along. Yeah, so video will be more and more relevant. I, I think it's always been easy for us to watch video, um, but it's becoming easier due to the fact that it can stream right away and you don't have to wait for it. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of interactivity. Interactivity, I think, is the big kind of evolving that we're seeing over the past decade, because previously it used to be your old man shouting at the TV because his favorite football player dropped the pass. Now it's more actually talking to the player and finding them on Instagram and finding them on Twitter or on TikTok. So I'm kind of curious as well. We're, we're seeing kind of a major evolution in the way that human beings consume video content. TikTok has taken the world by storm. You know, there's this uh, 420 dog face guy who is just making tons and tons of cash just wearing shoes or drinking cranberry juice, right? <laughs> how, how do you see video evolving over the years? Do you, do you feel like, and I'm kind of, kind of jumping around a little bit here, but do you see video as being more short-term attention span focused or long-term attention span focused or both? Yeah, I think that's a good question. One is um, attention span definitely most likely will go down just because there's too much content. We're overwhelmed with content. TikTok is a really good example of that. You're basically becoming ADD going through all these different videos and it's like almost a race to go through as much as you can and there's so much of it. Right. So um, that's a different, that's one form of content, right? Where YouTube is a little bit more long form and they care about how much watch time there is and it has to like videos that are eight, 10 minutes or more do a lot better than really short videos. So they want you to increase the watch time on YouTube. Um, but when I think, I just want to point out that um, there's a lot of companies that are trying to mimic what TikTok is doing. YouTube is introducing shorts. At this right. time, it's live in India. It's not live in the United States. But I think to your point, you know, the short term type of content is kind of picking up. It's absolutely picking up. There's too much of it. There's too much content. And yeah. people are going to get used to more and more to being able to go through short form a lot easier than focusing on one piece of content. I still think long form will be there and it has its use case, but short form will be really more and more popular. 
a really good example of seeing what's happening in the world is to look at China. China has a lot of technology that's way ahead of us, especially yeah. with live streaming. Live TikTok comes from China, but TikTok is one example of a few different many apps that existed in China since two, three years ago that have been doing live streaming extremely well and monetizing it. Um, there are some really cool apps there that are huge industries with huge following. So TikTok is one of them that came over. So we're really kind of two years behind China in the tech aspect, especially with apps and consumers. Mm, mm. Well, if there's one thing we can know without any hesitation, with complete certainty, is that things are going to continue to evolve very, very quickly. The other thing that you'd mentioned, PJ, is that there's a lot of competition for attention right now. Do you think that that's part of the value of kind of hosting your own channel, like on uscreen.tv, or you're not getting kind of bleeped and blipped at and ad advertised all over the place? Yeah, that's a really good question. Owning your audience, that's an awesome question. Owning your audience is key to sustainable long-term revenue and yeah. business, right? Think about it, YouTube subscription box number, right? Like uscreen, we have about 5,000 subscribers. What does that mean? Besides them subscribing to the channel, I have no idea who they are. I don't have their email address. <laughs> YouTube at any time can demonetize us or do anything to affect the channel. And that happens all the time. It's YouTube's channel. You simply have a following. It's the same thing on Instagram, TikTok. Those things can change instantly. You can get banned a lot. Some, a, a small portion of customers on Ustream are actually YouTubers that have issues with their channels for very specific reasons that you wouldn't even understand existed demonetization, right? Yep. So in that aspect, you don't own that audience. What type of value does that have? Yes, of course, following is super important and we don't diminish that because guess what? The following is the top of the funnel. It gets them to know you have a piece of content to buy. They buy it, you have their email address. Now you can nurture them and continue to upsell them different products in the future. So owning your platform, whatever platform you use and owning that audience and their email address and their information is sustainable long term revenue. Yeah, I 100% I agree with you there. You got to build this no like and trust. That's kind of your your top of the funnel type of stuff. Instagram, YouTube, that's your build no like and trust so that eventually one, five, 10 years down the road, they'll purchase from you. And I think at least for me, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is not building your your ownership of your audience. I mean, we don't know how social media is going to look in five years. I mean, during the middle of this presidential election that we're dealing with here, there's this kind of this big controversy over Twitter and Facebook, um, deplatforming people like the White House press secretary. Like that's a that's a pretty big deal. Right. Something is. Go I I strongly believe no matter what happens from a you know from an election standpoint, something is going to happen where you're going to wish you're going to be hoping that you've been building your email list you've been building your spreadsheet um so i think that's super critical i'm kind of curious on your side pj uh, being in the business for the past couple decades what's a tip what's a takeaway that we can you can use in our business as side hustlers as after hours entrepreneurs to actually build ownership and not just be on rented land like on social media yeah a good um simple step you can start is just collecting email addresses Right. And one of the ways to do that is what we call a free giveaway funnel. Right. So yep. you give away one video or a PDF or an ebook or an image, whatever your trait may be. If you're selling a nutritional guide or you're giving away one video out of your series, you give away one video so I can receive your email address. Right. Yep. And we have a tool on our website. You go to uscreen.tv, scroll to the bottom. It's called Lead Zen. It's actually coming and integrating it into the platform. It's a free giveaway funnel builder. It gives you the landing page. It gives you the opt-in funnel. It's a free tool. So basically, I give you a video and I collect your email address. So collecting email address is super important yeah. for the long-term sustainability of whatever you want to monetize or whatever information you want to give those subscribers because you can actually reach them now. You have their email address. And there's a saying, right? There's money in your list. And that really is true. No matter what you want to do, you have their email address. And as much as people say email, okay, spam and all that stuff, email is super effective in reaching your audience, especially with better spam tools. I use SaneBox, right? Same filter. It just filters out spam. Google does a really good job. So email is a really good form of communication. Build your email list. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely with you there. I just want to interject. There's other ways that you can build your email list as well. 
right? Obviously having that lead magnet is, yeah. a, is a great tactic, but I, I get a lot of my emails just from my Facebook group. It's one of the questions I have to join the Facebook group is what's your email and can I keep you informed? Then I can just add people in. That's a, been a pretty effective way. Or just in my calendar, if I'm booking with someone, I say, hey, I'd love to add you to my list. Is that okay? Don't just add people to your list. Absolutely. At least for Pete's stop adding me to your list if I don't ask you to. So yeah. that's, <laughs> that's another couple. Because in my opinion, I don't know if you feel the same way, PJ, that kind of breaks the no like, and trust if you get added to something that you don't want to be added to, you know? Absolutely. You got to ask for their permission. Usually when they're putting their email and there's an interest in that, if they opt in, they want to receive your information. And that's what you want. It's not just, oh, yeah. I have 10,000 emails. I have 1,000 good emails that have opted in. Yeah. And one of the things I do as well is I try to segment them out like by tagging where, you know, where these people come from, what are they interested in? You know, because again, with the after hours entrepreneur, I'm, I'm meeting different needs for different people, different segmentations, again, video, podcasting, blogging, web, all these different things. So just make sure I'm sending the right message to the right people is also an important thing too. Cause you don't want people to unsubscribe. You want people to read it. You want people Absolutely. It's good to point. You want to overwhelm them. You want to offer them value. That's, that's it. That's it. And that's a hard thing too. People use the term value all the time. I'm kind of curious. Um, have you ever created something that you thought would be valuable, but it ended up not being valuable. So you had to, to pivot it. Has that ever happened to you, PJ? Yeah, absolutely. I think that happens all the time. That's why I think it's important to know your audience, right? If you yeah. know who they are, you're more likely to give them something they want. If you're trying to cast a wide net, especially from the beginning, it's extremely difficult to, um, give them value all the time, right? If a use screens for everybody, then I'm offering all types of content on our blog, YouTube channel, and everyone, yeah. the, the right, wrong customer that's not the right vertical is gonna be like, that's not really for me. Why am I subscribing to this? So knowing who they are makes it easier. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. It, it's something I struggle with, <clears throat> constantly trying to get niche down to the, the right amount. But if, if I could just have someone walk away from this with one, with one tidbit, it's just get started, just do something. You can always change, you can learn, you can learn more about your audience. Like PJ says, um, you can learn more about yourself, you can learn more about how to execute. And of course, we're talking to PJ Ty, founder of uscreen.tv, sell more video online with PJ. He's gonna help you do that. So PJ, before I let you go here, I just wanna run to a couple quick rapid fire questions. You ready to rock? Yes. All righty then. PJ, what is a must have business item that costs less than 50 bucks? I think a, a good mic, a good mic's really important. And more and more we're doing remote Zoom calls. And I mean, you might be, you know, anywhere from 20, 30 bucks to, I think I have the Blue Yeti it's called. It's, I think it's a hundred bucks, but you know, it's totally worth it to have a really good mic with more and more of these virtual meetings we're having. Love it. Uh, if you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, PJ, what would you say? I would say focus, to be honest. I think focusing is really important. You can't do everything, right? So focusing and knowing what you want to do and who you're selling to is really important. Hmm. What is a must have subscription? That's a good question. I would say Netflix. I think Netflix has a broad range of content and it really is almost a gateway to getting into OTT. These All these platforms through the TV we call OTT over the top. So I think it's a really good gateway service to get you into getting comfortable with the online services. Yeah, just don't spend all your time watching movies, please, everyone out there. <laughs> Go in for the value. Uh, if you woke up, PJ, and there was only one business-related task you could do for the day, what would you do? That's a good question. I mean, I operate this company, so I would have to check emails. And I get emails from our team, and I get emails from our customers. So I would check emails. Love it. And uh, final question here for you, PJ. If you had a billboard message that could reach millions of people, what would you put on your billboard? <laughs> I would say I would put own your audience. Ooh, PJ said it. I agree with it. PJ, Ty, thank you so much. Yeah, awesome, Mark. It was awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed this episode. I've got several other episodes right here for you. Smash one of these videos to make sure that you don't miss out on the tips, tools, and tactics of industry experts. Let's take that side hustle full time. Smash one of these links.